Hi there, Facebook. Uh, I don't believe what I just saw. I'm about to unleash my early thoughts on Latired, as I'm calling them now, and that debacle in Boston that I saw, that embarrassment, that egg just laid by the King LeBron James. I don't know if it was a golden egg. I, it was just an egg to me. <clears throat> Before I get to it, just a quick cameo. I won't be too long tonight, but quick cameo from our daughter Hazel, our Maltese, year and a half old. Fierce the sweetest Maltese this side of Malta. She just had, I think, a bath because she was kind of like, kind of smelling a little bit. I don't know what happened. Here's Hazel. Quick Hazel. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hi. Say hi, Hazel. Say hi to LeBron. He's watching. Now, to business. To LeBron James. Again, I preface all this ahead of tomorrow's Undisputed. Sitting across the debate desk from my partner, my rival, my competitor, LaShannon Sharp. He has proclaimed LeBron James the GOAT, as in G O A T, G period, O period, A period, T period, as in greatest of all time, as in greater than you know who. I just can't take it. I did cover Michael Jordan in Chicago. I know Michael Jordan. I'm in awe of Michael Jordan. He's the greatest competitor in any sport we have ever seen. It's not even close. And I get somewhere between outraged and amused at LaShannon's repeated daily bombardment. Where's the goat mask? He's smoking a black and mild while he's got the goat mask on. I don't know. Maybe LeBron. I don't know what the subliminal message there is. As I said to LaShannon on the show the other day, again, you can see us from 930 to noon Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Undisputed. But I said to him the other day, are you trying to suggest that LeBron smokes too much? Michael Jordan did smoke cigars. You got me there. But is that why he's he's getting a little winded? I, I've never seen anything like this. I'm sorry. You can say I'm piling on, but I can't help it. The comparison is glaring. It's outrageous. It's mind-boggling that LeBron keeps getting tired during basketball games late in the season when you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's not that much left. I mean... Silver platter for the King tonight in Boston against a team without Kyrie. They can't close. They got no closer. They struggled like, like just craziness to, to score a basket for a seven-minute stretch of game two. I didn't think they'd ever get it home, and they did because the King ran out of gas. And tonight, they went another six or seven minutes. They couldn't buy a hoop, layups, jumpers, throwing it over the backboard, Terry Rozier. It was just laughably bad because there's no Kyrie and there's no Gordon Hayward. They don't even have Shane Larkin or Daniel Tice. And, and it's hard because they start a rookie, a second-year player, and a third-year player, and they couldn't close it. And it's just on the silver platter for the King to say, I got this. Nobody on Boston's roster can keep LeBron James from the rim. Nobody. You saw it, I don't know, four or five times tonight where he just he could just spin in the lane and just get he just gets to the glass easy and just lays it in. Marcus Morris, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, you, you name them. Al Horford. They can't cover LeBron James at the rim. Philly would have been a different story. Philly's got those two nuclear weapons in the lane. Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, they're seven feet tall and they can defend because they can time their jumps and they play with some nastiness. And LeBron, as we saw on March the 1st at Cleveland and then last week of the season, regular season at Philly, he has a hard time against those guys. They can discourage his shot at the rim. They can frustrate him, they can change his shot, and occasionally they can block his shot, but Boston can't. And, and here we go again, LeBron's tired. 
we've seen the stats come out, the second, third level stats. Forgive me, I don't have them off the top of my head right now because I'm still reeling from what I just saw, but LeBron is the, the you know one of the slowest what was he bottom three slowest players in basketball because he rests so much on offense and defense where he just stands around a lot and and obviously he's I don't know probably still top ten with the ball in his hand running downhill freight training toward the basket just in overall speed but but obviously you're averaging his movement speed for a whole basketball game and it's it's very low because he stands and watches a lot. And I tweeted before the game, so this isn't 2020 hypocritical hindsight, I tweeted, this is the one where you take care of business. You have them reeling, you have Boston on its heels, you expose them, you you put them back in their place, their young place, their their below average place to me offensively. They ranked 18th in the league in offense. That was with Kyrie Irving. So they don't have a closer. They don't have a big shot maker. I know Jason Tatum had a great game tonight for a kid, but we saw the Cavaliers defend at Cleveland in game three and in game four. And the spearhead of that defense, the tone setter, the guy who inspires, who initiates is LeBron James. Six times in his career, he's made first-team all-defense. This year, in the regular season, he ranked 309th in individual defensive win shares. That means 308 players played a little to a lot better defense than LeBron James played. I forget what he was going into this game. I should have looked it up, but it was like 59th just in the playoffs. So there are 50-odd players playing better defense than just in the playoffs. And, and it's mind-boggling to me that that he he admits he needs to rest in the blind witnesses out there all of his apologists and defenders in the media they just go right along with it like yeah lebron needs to rest because he's carrying such a heavy load baloney he's carrying a heavy load he's not he's resting on offense tonight he just took a pass on offense i've never seen anything like it like down the stretch, that game was winnable. We just saw Golden State last night. Lost me a whole case of Diet Mountain Dew. It's the first one I've lost, and I think I was I won ten straight bets from Shannon Sharp, and I lost this one when I thought it was the easiest cinch bet I'd ever had in my life because Golden State was up twelve with ten forty-five left at home over Houston, and you know the rest of that story. It can happen, and yet. Tonight, all I hear is LeBron's out of gas. He's holding his shorts. He's bending over. He's hands on his hip. What? This is preposterous. I thought this was the fittest athlete we've ever seen. The best condition, the smartest. He spends, whatever, $10 million a year on his body. Great. I can see it. He looks great in the weight room. But... How can you run out of gas in basketball games when Michael Jordan six times led the playoffs in what's called usage rate, which means six times he had the ball in his hands more than anybody in the whole playoffs because he was a scoring machine, and it took a lot of effort and a lot of energy because ten times he led the whole NBA in scoring. Ten scoring titles for Michael Jordan, only one for LeBron. Only once has LeBron led the playoffs in usage rate. For that matter, eight times Michael Jordan led the whole regular season in usage rate. Scoring machine. LeBron only once has led the regular season in usage rate. So don't give me carrying a heavy load. Fourteen times LeBron's had teammates make the all-star team. Kevin Love's a perennial all-star. Only six times Michael Jordan had teammates who made the all-star team. And it was Scottie Pippen every time, six times. But that last year at age 34, remember LeBron's now 33, at age 34, Michael Jordan made first team all defense for the the what, ninth time, it's nine to six over LeBron and first team all defense. LeBron's highly capable of playing defense. He was the initiator on defense in game three and game four. And I could just tell right away tonight, he was just lethargic. The, his team looks to him to establish. 
to, to lead the way, to say, this is how we're going to do it tonight. We're going to play with energy and urgency on defense. I'm going to be in full attack mode every time down on offense, and I'm going to break down their defense by getting in the lane and get to the rim, and then maybe I'll kick it to shooters for open threes. Tonight, especially in the fourth quarter, LeBron mostly just stood out on the perimeter and went Lonzo Ball. We've seen it before. He did it in, in game one and two at Boston, where he just flips passes sort of lifelessly, haphazardly, lacklusterly to the perimeter. And it, it just makes it so easy to defend. And then on the other end, remember, they, they, they finished 29th, the Cavaliers did, out of 30 teams in, in overall team defense because LeBron had such a terrible year on defense. You're telling me he's the GOAT? The GOAT? LeBron was the GOAT of this game, and I'm talking about lowercase, one word, G-O-A-T, GOAT, as in animal GOAT, as in you were the reason, the biggest reason they lost. And I know it's going to happen. JR is going to take the fall, and George Hill are going to take, he'll take the fall. What were they, two of 11 combined? That's the starting backcourt for Cleveland Cavaliers tonight. We'll check out what the starting backcourt for the Boston Celtics did. Terry Rozier and Jalen Brown went like, I don't have it right in front of me, I think they were like 3 of 15 and 4 of 15. Check that out. Is that all that much better or worse? That could be worse. Some people's books, not that much better than the 2 for 11 of the Cavs starting backcourt. Boston somehow shot 38% and won the game going away. How can that be when the best player in the world, quote unquote, is playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers? And then I have to watch LeBron, shrewd operator, media savant. I had to watch him go over to the bench and instead of sitting with his teammates, he camps at the end of the scorer's table and sits on the end of the score t scorer's table sort of near the coaching staff. And he knows the camera's on him. So he takes a bottle of water and he drains the whole bottle of water, glug, 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 on camera, beautiful ABC caught it right on, and uh, ESPN caught it right on schedule, and the message sent to the blind witnesses, to all the gullibles out there in LeBron land, is, I was dehydrated tonight. Maybe we'll hear he was cramping. I didn't see him limp. I don't know. Checked himself out of game seven against Indiana at home. Just checked himself out. Walked, it looked like to me, all the way up the tunnel to the locker room. I didn't see him limp. I didn't see any signs of cramps. I don't know. I was told back in the 2014 San Antonio-Miami series when LeBron obviously was with the Heat. Remember he cramped in game one at San Antonio. And did they turn off the air conditioner or not? air conditioning or not pay their bills. I have no idea what happened, but only one player on the court that night cramped, and it was LeBron James, and he visually cramped all over the court, and yet I was told by a very inside, well-placed Miami Heat source, who I've been close to for many years in my career, that the training staff had found that LeBron cramped under pressure, that stress would cause him to physically cramp. Okay. Is that what happened in Game 7 against Indiana? And then Kevin Love saved the whole season for the Cavaliers because while LeBron was gone for those five clock minutes, basketball clock minutes, Kevin Love made two huge threes and a mid-range jump shot. And the lead went from only Cavs by one to Cavs by 12, and the game was basically over when LeBron returned from the locker room. He's over there eating oranges on the, the bench as if he's cramped. I, I have no idea. I don't get it. This is a great player. This is one of the all-time greatest. But I question the intangibles, the guts, the I, I don't know. How can you get tired? Then he talked openly about getting tired, and he had a quote the other day to The Athletic, I believe, where he said, I'm number one in the NBA in being tired after games. Why? How? Doing what? Are you? Did, did you see Chris Paul play defense last night for four quarters on Golden State? You don't think he was tired after the game and offense, obviously, as the point guard? 
You don't think James Harden and P.J. Tucker were tired and Trevor Ariza? You don't think they just played their asses off on both ends of the floor? My God, what are we talking about here? He's only 33. And this is the first time LeBron has ever played all 82 games. First time in his career, Michael Jordan played all 82 nine times. Hmm. Interesting. So, LeBron did play the most minutes in the regular season and the most minutes he has so far in the playoffs. Well, whose fault was that? Is, is that the coach's fault? I mean, to me, LeBron makes the biggest coaching decisions. Obviously, Ty Lue makes some, but they're like co-head coaches. And if LeBron doesn't want to come out of the game, he's not coming out of the game. And if he wants to come out, as he did tonight at odd points, he just takes himself out of the game. Well, so it was his choice to play that many minutes during the regular season. And to me, he's just stat building, stat stuffing. That's fine. Nobody can stuff the stat sheet better than LeBron James at 6'9", 270. J just a tremendous force of a basketball player, obviously. Had the best offensive year of his career. I thought he was playing at the highest offensive level of his career. And yet... <laughs> I think he's realized that he can't catch 6-0 and Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals with six MVPs. He's LeBron now 3-5, and looking up at Golden State, or maybe it's going to be Houston. I don't know. And, and he just realized, I've got to do it with longevity stats. He's now played the most minutes of anybody in the history of the playoffs. Well, is that a reason to be tired? Because... Michael Jordan, again, at 34, one year older than LeBron is now at 33. Just, just look at LeBron, excuse me, Michael's last game in Chicago, game six. It was do or die because Scottie Pippen was sick, and they weren't even sure he could make it through that game, let alone the game seven that would have also been in Utah in the 2-3-2 format. And Michael Jordan in that last game six, the closeout game for the Bulls, he scored 45 of their 87 points and obviously led the game in usage rate. 45 of 87. Scotty managed eight points. I think Kukoc had 15 points. And Michael led all players on either team with four steals, including the huge one late, snaking behind Carl Malone, stealing from him, dribbling all the way up the floor. Scotty on the wing, with his hands out like, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. And Michael said, nah, I got this. Little slick push off Brian Russell. That's how they played the game in those days. Nobody's going to call that. And free throw line jump shot. Hold the pose. 87-86 Chicago Bulls. Make or miss on that shot. Win or lose. You miss it, you lose. And you just might be losing game seven without Scottie Pippen at all. You just might. Okay. That took high energy, 45 of your 87 points. I never, ever, I was around Michael Jordan. I covered the team. Nobody ever talked about Michael being tired. I mean, what next? Are we going to hear that LeBron is suffering? That's probably the next story. He's suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome. He's been diagnosed and blah, blah. I don't know. I just can't get it through my head that the greatest conditioned athlete ever, Iron Man, as LaShannon, my partner on Undisputed, again, 9.30 noon Eastern on Fox Sports 1, is always telling me he's got vibranium. Okay, great. An endless supply of vibranium. Where was it tonight? Did he, he, he couldn't get it through security? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just can't imagine LeBron James getting tired in a basketball game that's the fifth game in a potential seven-game series against an inferior team that you're you're favored to beat. I just, it's unfathomable that right away you could see LeBron was lifeless and listless on defense, and then on offense he would occasionally attack, but he he just didn't seem to care, and he's sending the constant message throughout the game to his teammates, eh, I'm not taking it that seriously. I'm not taking it that seriously. Careless, haphazard passes, that resulted in turnover. I, I forgot to look what he totaled. Did he have six total turnovers? <sighs> Could have had seven. But the, these are just careless passes where you just don't care. It just looks like you're out of it and you're, 
your effort, your energy, your urgency, you left it back in Cleveland. And it got so bad at what was the, like the nine minute mark of the third quarter. And I immediately tweeted about it. LeBron James spins in the lane when no, no defender can keep him from the glass. He spins and shoots this sort of, I don't know. It, maybe it was kind of a hook shot, but it was really just a left-handed shot shot. A left-handed shot that hit nothing. He airballed from about eight feet, maybe, right from the middle of the lane. He shoots a left-handed air ball. Do you realize what message that sends to your teammates? I'm just not into it tonight, guys. I, I'm not taking this seriously at all. No big deal. I'm sure LeBron's just going to sit at the podium tonight and say, I have zero concern. That's what he said after game one, after game two. Zero concern. I'm losing no sleep over this. Okay. Do, do I still think the Cavaliers could win this series? Sure I do. They got the best player in the world. Boston, Boston's overrated. They're, they're just a spunky young team with a couple of crafty, wily veterans and Marcus Morris and Al Horford. I don't know. They got a pretty good coach, but he's done nothing yet. Brad Stevens. I guess he left his genius behind. He forgets to pack his genius when he goes to Cleveland. I don't know. So can Cleveland win game six? Surely they can win game six. They just had their way with Boston in three and four. And so is LeBron capable of just going off on Boston in game seven? Sure he is. He's done it in that building, you know, countless times, huge times, epic times. Game six, what year? I'm losing track of which year it was. Let's see, he had the all-time superstar meltdown 2011 in the NBA Finals. First time around with the Heat at Dallas. Just chosen one turned frozen one in games four, five, and six as they lost that series in six. So that was 2011. So it would have been 2012 conference finals. Remember game six at Boston? Just sensational. Just all-time, all-time. Classic game. So is he capable of that in a game seven? Sure he is. They can't stop LeBron. If he's in full-on attack mode from the start, he, he can just impose his will. First quarter, he can just show Boston, no, sorry, not even in your house, not tonight. You're just not good enough to stop me. And, and if he, even if he wants to roam on defense, if he just disrupts on defense, He's a force. He can still be a force. But, but he's got to be able to play four quarters of basketball. Is that asking too much of the quote-unquote best player in the land? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just dumbfounded by this and, and realize I have to go in there tomorrow and hear the cockamamie excuses. It'll be JR. He'll be the scapegoat. It'll be George Hill. It'll be Jordan Clarkson. It'll be Tristan Thompson. He doesn't have enough help. Poor LeBron just doesn't have enough help. Well, why didn't he help himself? I, I don't know. I don't get it. He was the go to this game. So I, I'm going to be all over Shannon tomorrow. I dare him to wear that goat mask. You know, that thing, I've been having nightmares about it. you got to check it out if you haven't seen it. Undisputed, 9.30 noon Eastern on Fox Sports 1. He, he ordered this goat mask. Then he does a sheep sound. Bah. I don't know what a goat does, but I'm not sure he does that. But whatever. But the goat mask is scary to me. And, and I told LaShannon today on the air, you should, you should create like a horror movie, you know, like a franchise. You know, we had Scream and we had Saw and, and we could have goat. We could have goat. He could just, the, the goat, you know, the... The, the the killer would be wearing a goat mask, and it's horrifying. And and tonight, LeBron's performance was just horrifying to me. It was inexplicably lifeless. And he does this occasionally, where I'm just like, well, what are you doing? Are you hurt? I don't know. Maybe he's hurt. Is he sick? Maybe he's sick. Maybe we didn't know about it. Maybe we'll find out soon enough. He or his cronies, his camp, will drop all the right hints. Something, it reminds me of the classic time after Boston. Remember when, 
uh, this was his last go round with the Cavaliers. The series after which Dan Gilbert accused LeBron of quitting. Remember this? So this would have been 20, what, 10? Yeah, 2010. Last go around with, with the Cavaliers, first time. And in those playoffs, they lost to the Celtics in six games. Dan Gilbert just flat out accused him publicly of quitting, which led, obviously, to him taking his talents to South Beach. But remember, after that series, somebody in LeBron's camp dropped a hint to several of the key media people, including my friend Stephen A. Smith at ESPN, my former partner on First Take, that LeBron had to be sedated before those games, four, five, and six, because he was having an issue, which you probably have heard the internet myth about, the urban legend about, with a teammate in the locker room and interpersonal relationships. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not buying that LeBron had to be sedated before those games. I'm, he, it looked like he was sedated tonight. Maybe tonight I would have believed it. I don't know, it got so bad at the end of the game, even when he did get to the rim, he's just blowing layups. And, and at one point, he had Terry Rozier on him late, and he, he attacks and gets right to the rim. He could have dunked it, and at the last second, he somehow tries to throw it to the corner to, I don't know, Kyle Korver or somebody in the far corner, and Horford just bats the ball up in the air, and it's another turnover. I, I was like, what are you doing? I tweeted, what are you, ca all caps, doing, LeBron? What are you doing? I don't know. That that was the the kill shot game. I'm talking about basketball kill shots here. That That's the one where you, basketball terms, rip their basketball hearts out. And I even tweeted going to the fourth quarter, this is the perfect scenario where LeBron can just take it up a level, reach down for some energy, some stamina, Maybe it's just some guts, and, and you just rip their hearts out, the Celtics and their fans' hearts out right in their own building because Boston can't close. What, did, wasn't it embarrassing watching Boston try to make a shot? It went tonight like eight minutes of the fourth quarter. And I'm saying, they just can't get home. There's no Kyrie. There's no closer. Those kids can't close. All of a sudden, it's the rim gets real small for Jason Tatum and Terry Rozier and Jalen Brown. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, here, King, take it home. Can't you just see him just attack mode, attack mode, and he's just scoring, getting fouled. And one, maybe he makes a jump shot. He wasn't very hot from perimeter tonight. I don't love it when LeBron shoots from the perimeter. I love it when he attacks. And nothing. It, it was right there. You you could have just led the charge where you have to show your team, okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm going, and all of a sudden, Jordan Clarkson's stroking it with conviction because the King's going now. He's plugged back in. He's with us. He has joined the living. He is leading the charge. But But if he doesn't inspire... His teammates, they can't inspire themselves because they're, they're lost. They're as lost as I am watching, thinking, what the hell is going on? What are you doing? I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's just setting us up for the big crescendo finish. Drop the mic, drop the curtain on Boston. You could, you know, you could, fully capable. But, but why would you, if, if you're tired, why wouldn't you just suck it up in game five and just try to slam the door on them so that you could go home and literally slam it in game six and be over and get, I said this on Undisputed Today, you could get, I don't know how many days, what, six or seven days of rest you crucially, desperately need? Okay, so why wouldn't you do that? Now you just made it that much tougher when you have an opening in the West where you might not have to deal with Golden State. Maybe this is going to be a monumental upset by the Houston Rockets, who obviously it's best two out of three now. Two of them are in Houston. Do I think Houston's going to win game five? I don't. Would I bet a nickel on it or a drop of diet Mountain Dew? I would not because, man, I got to say it. I'll say it again publicly. I'm a Kevin Durant fan. I think he's all around better than LeBron. 
and he, at seven feet, really came up small at the end of the game. And the more I think about it, the worse it gets. I said it again on Undisputed. I mean, I said it over and over and over and over again this morning on Undisputed, 9.30 noon Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Kevin Durant just blew it. He just blundered. He, he had the ball in his hands, 15 seconds left. He dribbles it up the floor, and he is the deadliest free throw shooter in the playoffs. He's so much better from the free throw line than LeBron James. It's a joke. Kevin Durant is, if I remember the numbers correctly, 84 of 91 in the playoffs from the free throw line. Of all those who have shot at least 45 free throws, that's number one percentage, 92%. LeBron is number 12 on that list. LeBron has never been a very good free throw shooter, and that just drives me nuts. He's too good a player not to, after 15 years, have improved to an 80% free throw shooter. And by the way, Shannon Sharp and I made a bet before these playoffs. He said LeBron will shoot 80% or better in the playoffs, and I laughed and said, thank you very much, and I took that bet. And I don't know what he is now, 70, maybe 74%. I don't think he'll get there. He'd have to hit one of those. He did have one real hot streak against Indiana where he made 22 in a row, and it's going to take another one of those to get him to 80 after uh, now that they've shot such a high number of free throws. But the point is Kevin Durant had a chance, I thought, maybe to get to the free throw line by getting to the rim, getting fouled, and it was just an abomination of a play where Steve Kerr didn't call timeout. I didn't have a problem because Houston had just bullied Golden State, the whole second half in half-court offense, just played football, basketball, just literally knocked them out of everything, every set they tried to run. Golden State's a finesse team, and Golden State literally got its butt kicked last night, physically whipped, got punked, got made to look soft and timid and unresponsive. And so Steve Kerr is thinking, well, I don't want to call timeout and let Houston set its half-court defense and just play bully ball on us again. So he just said, I'm going to let it fly. And he let Kevin drill up the floor, and then everybody goes to the left side. Nobody clears for Kevin Durant. Steph's over there. Livingston's over there. Draymond's over there. And obviously there's a red sea of rocket jerseys over there too. And so Durant's like, uh, I guess I can't drive through four guys to get to the rim. And at the last second, he could have pulled up from maybe 18 or 20 feet. I think he's the deadliest mid-range jump shooter I have ever seen, ever. And he sees Draymond, I'm sorry, Clay flash down the baseline, and he bounce passes to Clay. Clay's gimpy. Clay's not hot. Clay's got to catch it running away from the basket and turn and shoot. And Trevor Reza is all over him, all up into him. And you know the rest of the story. They were trying to desperately call timeout with seven seconds left. Kerr's trying to call, Draymond's trying to call timeout. Nobody can call timeout. Kevin wants the ball back, but Clay is suffocated in the corner. He's trapped, and he throws up some prayer that misses everything. Horrendous. So Kevin Durant blew it. He had one shot. He, he had a bad game overall, although he still gave you 27 and 12. Not all that terrible. And yet, at least he was fighting his behind off. And He'll, he'll learn from that. You just got to – he's the alpha. He's the closer. He's the best player on that team. He's the reigning MVP from the NBA Finals. And you got to go straight up because nobody can block that shot at seven feet tall and just shoot it. And shoot it with conviction. I've seen him make a bunch of late walk-off type shots. And he blew it. He blundered. And yet LeBron tonight just blew the whole, the whole night. It's like he just didn't show up. Just a pathetic performance by such a great player because it was such a tired performance. What? You can't be tired. You can't be serious. You can't tell me that. I'm sorry. I, my mind is blown by that. Never, ever did I hear of Michael Jordan being tired. Just not. He had the flu game at Utah, previous finals. He was the opposite of tired. Played with the flu, just lit him up, played all night. I don't know. He didn't need rest. Average more minutes in the playoffs at 34 than even LeBron has at 33. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't wait. I, I can't wait for 930 Eastern. 
It's 6.30 here in the Pacific time zone. I can't wait because I do have a lot of respect for Shannon Sharp. He's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's in good shape. He, his, he was in great shape when he played. He thinks he's in great shape now. He is not in better shape than I am. We got into it the other day about body fat. There's no way he has less body fat than I. I'm, I'm like a workout lunatic, and I'm not that proud of it, but I am proud of my body fat because it's 7%, and I just, Shannon's round, and I'm ripped. I'm sorry. It's just he wore his jersey the other day to show off his guns. Mine aren't bad, I, except I weigh 170, and he weighs... I don't know what he weighs, 240 maybe, 235, 40, probably, maybe more. I don't know. I'm off track. I'm off the subject. I can't wait because I do respect him to hear what comes back across the table. He will go first tomorrow in what we call our A block. The question will be something like, what happened, Shannon? And I, I can't wait to hear it, but I'm going to predict. In First words out of his mouth will be J.R. Smith and George Hill. First words, maybe we'll get some Kyle Korver and some Tristan. It, it will all, his opening salvo, I predict, will be about how poor LeBron James does not have enough help. I believe he will talk for the first four minutes of the show, which is a long time on television, without mentioning LeBron being tired. I believe that's what will happen because I don't think the blind witnesses want to hear a word about LeBron being tired. And maybe he's right. Maybe it wasn't that big a deal. But it is to me, and I'm not going to back off, and I'm not going to back down. And again, Shannon has set the bar, the highest bar you could set, because he says he's already eclipsed Michael Jordan. He's greater than Michael Jordan, so now I have to critique his performances via the Michael Jordan bar. Okay, Jordan never had a game like that. Never, ever had a game. For that matter, he never had a 2011 finals where he melted down. He never had a 2014 finals where his team got blown off the floor by a record finals margin. That happened to LeBron James via my Spurs, who won in five games by a record finals margin. That never happened to Michael Jordan. So here we go. I can't wait for tomorrow. I took a beating today for Durant. Uh... I don't think I'm going to take a beating tomorrow. Am I completely... I, look, I picked the Cavs to win this in five, and they should have won it in five. Am I giving up on them? Right? I am not. But I got big questions about LeBron James being the best player in the world. And, and I got... I got mind-blowing questions about how anybody out there watching right now can begin to make a case... a, a, a sane serious case, an objective case that he's better than Michael Jordan. Tonight showed you once again, he did not. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching tonight.